Another aspect of the CMS you might not interact with very much would be that of project settings and configurations. But I think it's important to understand what options you have available. So you have, if you ever need to extend the project or ask your devs for something specific, you know what you're looking for. Within project settings, I'd say the first thing that's relevant to us as editors would be that of the asset CDN. So by default or out of the box, Dato has a few presets on how images are handled. We work with a provider called ImageX, which is our integration for assets, and they offer a ton of customizations to make sure that everything is well optimized and delivered as required. Honestly, it's magic. Um, out of the box, there are a few Dato CMS presets that we believe are the best for asset management. However, if you want to have something custom or work with your devs on having a different opinion on things like compression and enhancements and so on, you have the option to add custom parameters that are then applicable to the entire project. We're not going to save anything and keep the defaults for now. But one important aspect is that of collaboration. Of course, if you're building a project, you're most likely not going to be working alone. In this case, I'm also going to have my colleague Alessio joining me to create some videos. So I'll go ahead and add him in as an admin to this project. Further than that, users also have roles. By default, all users are either an admin or an editor within Dato CMS. But if you wanted, you could create something specific. Just for the sake of highlighting something here, let's go ahead and create one of a translator, which I should be able to spell better. Um, and for simplicity, let's give them the same rights as an admin. However, if you wanted, you could be a lot more specific um, and set different permissions for different environments, different webhooks, so on and so forth. Honestly, there's a lot to customize. We'll go ahead and save this. And now we have the role of a translator. I would say these are the more relevant ones for editors. I'm not really going to edit anything to do with the API tokens or webhooks. I don't want my devs coming after me. So let's stop this here. And finally, configuration is where you can handle settings for things like localization, the appearance, and workflows. Now, localization in Dato is quite specific. You're not only restricted to creating content in different languages, but you can create a very different version for each specific region. So. For example, we've created this project by default in English, but as we proceed, we may want to create content in Italian and German. So let's go ahead and add Italian, but Italian is not only spoken in Italy. There are certain differences between the Italian they speak in Italy and that in Switzerland. So here, what we can do is go ahead and create a version that's just going to be catered to users in Italy and create one that's going to be catered to users in Switzerland. For the sake of simplicity, we won't do this with German, which is also different for different countries, but we'll just go ahead and create a generic German locale. Once this is done, we can go ahead and save these settings. So every time we create content, we're going to have the option to also turn that English content into Italian for Italy and Switzerland, and also in German. The appearance is where you can sort of have a little fun and customize what the dashboard looks like. We're not going to change this for now and leave things as they are. Plugins are something that we will get to in a lot more detail in the next few videos. Fascinating. So I'm going to leave that for then. And workflows are finally something where you would create different stages. So by default, all the content you create in Dato CMS would always have a draft state and a published state. But there are many cases in which you might want to customize this. So if you remember, we earlier created a role for a translator. So maybe it makes sense to go ahead and create another role for a translation, sorry, another workflow uh, called translation, which is what content would exist in between a draft and a published state. What I mean here is every time new content is created, it cannot be published on the front end unless and until someone has gone through the translation phrase and completed content. We're not going to go into the specifics of this. We'll just go ahead and save the workflow. And what you will see further on is whenever we create content, we'll have the option to move it to a translation stage. Content permissions are also something you can set for each and every specific role. In the case of what we had done for the translator, if we wanted to give them restricted permissions or change the fact that they could go from Italian to German or only stay in German, then this is where we would go ahead and create any restrictions for them on what they can do when it comes to things like images, what they can do on specific records. Are they able to translate blog posts, but not press releases? Are they able to create buttons, but not newsletters and so on and so forth? 